I'm Virginia Sperry, and I am a metal sculptor. An animal has to sort of appear in my head. I do research, I have lots of books on mammals and all the animals in the world, and I look through them, and generally there's one or two that pop out at me. The kangaroo, I had been wanting to do one for a while, if I can find an actual live kangaroo, I go look at it. And then I do the research on dimensions and lifestyle. Where do they live? How do they get food? How do they bring up their young? So I really learn quite a bit about the animal so that I get an idea of why they are the way they are. Then I start sketching. I don't consider myself a very good drawer so I don't really rely a lot on the sketches but it does help me to start seeing specific parts of the animal. Uh, I might just sketch the eye or I might sketch an ear or the whole thing just to to get an idea of the dimensions you know how long is the tail versus how long is the body. Once the drawing is done the two-dimensional drawing, I get to start the three-dimensional drawing, which I'm much better at. I often will create an armature, a framework, if you will, for the skin to go around. And the armature is actually one of the more difficult pieces, not in the making of it, uh, for it's just bending rod and welding it, but in the fact that if I get it wrong, there's a lot of cutting and pasting that I have to do later on. And sometimes I don't notice that until I've done quite a bit of covering. So it's really important to get it as close as possible. And that is going to be the skeleton. So creating the pieces, the skin, if you will, it is a puzzle. It, it is definitely a puzzle. And I start with one large piece of sheet steel. And I have a plasma cutter, which is a godsend. Uh, I used to cut with a torch, and the plasma cutter is much easier. It's like cutting through butter, and it's a lot of fun. And I start by just cutting you know, random pieces. I have no thought as to the shape of them. I have a thought as to the size. Depending on what piece of the animal I'm working with, the hands obviously need much smaller pieces. The back needed larger pieces. And so I just have fun just cutting various geometric pieces, small, large triangles, squares, abstract shapes, it doesn't really matter, knowing that they're all going to somehow appear together on this animal. Once I'm done cutting them, I have to do a little refining. There's something called slag that happens when you cut with a plasma cutter, so I have to knock that off and do a little grinding just to smooth it out, a little sanding. Then I take each piece and as I'm figuring out how it works with the pieces that are already on the animal, I look at them as you would a puzzle, except the dif difference between what I do and an actual puzzle is that because it's three-dimensional, I have to make sure that it's rounded or shaped the way it's supposed to be. So I will figure out where the curve should go, throw it in the vise, and take my five pound hammer and whack the heck out of it. I use a MIG welder for welding. 
for me that the easiest because I need to be able to hold a piece as I weld it. I sort of think about it like gluing with lightning. I am taking incredible heat and gluing pieces of metal together. I hold it and I just basically zap it. It's, it's a single tack weld to hold it and then I will add more welds as necessary. I find that using the minimal amount of welds possible because there's a really good chance that that piece will have to come back off again for various reasons, whether it's because I found the armature is wrong or the piece doesn't quite do what I wanted it to or it's just, you know, a bad day. Uh, I try not to weld the heck out of it at first. If something doesn't feel right to me, it, it, it sometimes takes me a while to figure out why, but eventually I will hone in on a part that's just not right. And uh, because I work in steel, which is easy to cut apart, I take a cutting wheel and cut the welds and I can pull off just one piece or I can pull off whole sections and start all over again. Often I don't use the same pieces again. Once they've been used, they go in the scrap pile. The oxyacetylene torch is useful if there is a particular piece that did not get bent enough and I want to bend it a little bit more, but I don't really want to have to cut the piece out. So occasionally I will take the torch and heat up a piece and, and bash it a little bit while it's on the animal and make it fit a little bit better. There are moments when I'm working that it's almost an unconscious thing. There is more than just skin there. It shows the inner workings of the animal, the anatomy. And I do do research about the anatomy. So occasionally, you know, when I use that torch and I bash it in a little bit, I am using it to not just show a covering of the animal, but to actually show the workings of the animal, where the muscle might be, or where the point of the bone, the knee bone is. You know, they say the eyes are the windows of the soul, and actually I find that as much as I work on an animal before I put the eyes in, it's not until then that the personality comes. And I know it's a kangaroo long before that, but I don't know that it's that particular kangaroo until I put the eyes in. I make the eyes on this particular animal by taking a rod and then do some welding, a lot of welding, a lot of grinding to create the form of the eye. And there's another place where I have to do a lot of research on eyes because each animal is different as to where the eyes go. So I have to figure out what expression are they going to have? What is the personality that's going to come out? And it's an ongoing process. It's not just one day. There's, there's several days. Sometimes the eyeball has to come out and be put back in, in a different place. I got started welding in 2013. I took a class down at the Maryland Institute College of Art on metal fabrication and actually fell in love with it. Had no idea what I was getting into, but uh, the whole thing of welding and 
heat and manipulating the metal was really fascinating to me. And the first day there, he turned on the oxyacetylene torch. And all of a sudden, I was working with fire. And I loved it. And I have been doing it ever since. As I am working on the animal, I'm constantly checking it out to make sure that visually and kinesthetically it is going in the right direction. Steel is such a form of energy. It takes incredible energy to make steel. It takes me incredible energy to create this object, a representational gesture. This is my gesture of a kangaroo, or a musk ox, or a giraffe. There are days when I struggle mightily because it just ain't working. And then there's those days where something clicks. A certain moment I can see that what I am physically making matches what is in my head and it is so exciting. I just want to drink it in. I sit there and I look at it. I stare at it for a while and just think, yeah, that's right. That's just so right.